um, yeah, so if I uh, just give a very quick overview of the uh, presentation today, uh, basically we wanted to discuss about the encrypted DNS. Uh, and and uh, there are a couple of uh, protocols that what we want to focus on, uh, which is uh, uh, DOT and DOH. Uh, but in general, um, uh, we will uh, obviously uh, call the uh, discussion as encrypted DNS because it's all related to the uh, uh, encryption. And uh, now we will also actually uh, touch on some of the uh, uh, discussion points, the uh, policy implications, and so on as well, uh, together with the technical details, so that uh, you would understand uh, the whole discussions that are happening uh, around this topic. And also, actually, uh, the key um, idea here is also for you to have some understanding on this topic, uh, and also, uh, and also, actually, uh, provide you um, the uh, ICANN's point of view, ICANN's perspective of this uh, particular topic as well. Earlier, Samiran gave a very quick overview of uh, ICANN and, and what is ICANN's role. Uh, and um, so we will also actually uh, express, I mean, ICANN is, of course, you know, uh, is, is a body that it's, it's a, a global multi-stakeholder body uh, where we do uh, uh, quite a lot of facilitation in terms of uh, policy development and so on. Uh, so we will, um, and it, but end of the day, it's all uh, the community that who decide uh, the, um, you know, how, how the things uh, happen and so on, uh, especially uh, in relation to the uh, DNS policies. Uh, now, so from that perspective, uh, let us go into uh, this discussion so that uh, uh, you can get an idea of uh, uh, the encrypted DNS topic and, and then the uh, related uh, uh, discussions. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Now, uh, just trying to uh, recap the yesterday's discussion. Now, if you remember, like if you attended yesterday's session, uh, Dr. Balaji and also uh, other, our other colleagues from uh, CDAC explained you quite detail in detail about you know how dns work the resolution process and so on uh, so i'm not going to of course go, go and discuss all that uh, in in detail but this is just a snapshot of uh, you know those discussions we had yesterday especially in relation to the resolution uh, when the resolution happens, you can see uh, we have these DNS stub uh, resolvers or, or basically the clients. And um, then uh, the clients would go and talk to the uh, recursive servers. There are, you know, of course, there are quite a lot of recursive servers out there. Uh, and then I have shown you kind of, you know, big cloud here because uh, there are so many of other uh, resolvers, the forwarders and so on, uh, which you get in the middle as well. Uh, and then we are, you know, we have all these authoritative servers, uh, and then these authoritative servers could be even the root servers because root servers are also authoritative servers, and then the TLDs, the second levels, and so on. These are all authoritative servers. So basically, there is uh, quite a lot of communication um, would happen uh, between these different uh, uh, parties or different entities that we have in this whole ecosystem. Now, what I want you to actually observe here is that all those arrows that you can see in this picture, the in the diagram, all those arrows, the gray ones, uh, the communication is all unencrypted, right? Uh, so, when means obviously when we send the uh, uh, the packets, uh, basically they are uh, on clear text, right? So. Uh, as you can see, then the the DNS communicate. I mean, DNS messages uh, they are uh, un unencrypted, right? So that's how uh, when we do a DNS query, when we send, uh, you know, when we ask for a, a question and when we get a response from a server, uh, everything is all unencrypted. Uh, next slide, please. All right. So now with encrypted dns what are we trying to uh, focus so or where is our uh, discussion point is uh, 
uh, where we are actually uh, focusing on is actually the blue arrows what you find uh, in the diagram. Uh, the left, uh, you know, uh, sorry, I can't actually point my mouse pointer, but uh, you can see in, in the left side, um, the blue arrows. So that's where actually we are focusing. Right, so these are, uh, you can see that uh, we have the stub uh, client or the stub resolver. Uh, and then uh, we also have the recursive uh, servers, typically um, operated by the operators like ISPs or mobile operators or uh, the public DNS service providers and so on, right? Uh, so here we are talking or our focus area in this discussion is all about uh, the communication between the stub resolvers, the stub clients, and the uh, recursive resolvers. So that is where the encrypted DNS topics, uh, topic, uh, the scope of the uh, encrypted DNS topic. I mean, there, there are some work going on, work happening uh, in relation to the communication between the recursive servers and the authoritative servers, uh, but um, it is not any, you know, uh, it's not any, uh, we don't, even though the work is going on, there are no sort of uh, protocol standards and so on, right? Uh, maybe in the future that might come. Uh, but uh, as far as today is concerned, um, we are talking about uh, the uh, communication between the stub clients and the uh, recursive servers. Next slide. All right. Now, so speaking of the uh, DNS encryption, uh, as I already explained to you, you can see that uh, the uh, encrypted DNS, it starts in a stub resolver, and then in it ends at the recursive resolver. That is where our focus area. Uh, now, typically, um, in usually, now stub resolver is actually, uh, say even when we use some application in our system, right? Uh, the application would call for the uh, resolver, which is the stub resolver, basically, which is in the operating system, right? Because um, operating system is the one that, you know, uh, offers that stub resolver service. So our applications would uh, talk to the uh, stub resolver in the operating system, and that is what is going to go and talk to the uh, recursive servers, right? Now, uh, in the... Uh, Last few years, uh, as you can also see in this slide, uh, we have mentioned that some of the uh, applications, the browse, especially the browsers, right? So they have added their own stub resolvers. Now, I told you earlier that we were talking about the stub resolvers, which is in the operating system itself, right? Uh, but now uh, this function is brought into the uh, applications so, or the browsers, for example, right? Um, so that is, uh, that's what uh, has happened in, in the recent times, right? So in this case, uh, obviously now uh, the uh, client, the um, the client is now acting as a stub resolver and then uh, uh, the server is now acting as the recursive resolver. So we are talking about, of course, the client server environment here. So our stub uh, resolver would be the client and then the recursive uh, resolver or the recursive server is the server, right? Next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, yep. All right. So now, um, so I hope you have got some understanding of um, DNS encryption, where it is happening, right, between the stub resolver and the uh, recursive resolver. Uh, and then uh, let's see actually how this is done. So because of this recent development that has happened in the uh, IETF, uh, there were two protocols that were introduced. Uh, one is called DNS over TLS, or simply we call it as DOT. And then the other one is uh, DNS over HTTPS, uh, and simply we call it as uh, DOH. Uh, so both these protocols were introduced in, in the last few years. And uh, uh, 
they are actually, you know, in, in, if you really take the objective of that, they uh, are quite aligned because uh, the objective is basically to uh, encrypt these messages, right? DNS encryption, that is the, uh, that is the objective. But then there are some uh, differences as well that which we are going to discuss. Now, both these, um, uh, both these protocols are, of course, they are internet standards, uh, which means IETF standards, the IETF drafts. Uh, also, you can see the references to these IETF drafts. Um, DOT is defined in RFC 7858, and then the uh, DOH is defined um, in RFC 8484, right? So those are the links for those. Next slide. Okay, now with uh, DNS over TLS, simply now this is what we call DOT or DNS over TLS. Uh, so what are we trying to do here? Uh, basically, uh, this will use the transport layer security or TLS, right? Um, and then uh, the, for this, as you know, like in, in uh, when you see all the uh, different layers, uh, uh, of data communications, you know, we have uh, application layer, we have transport layer and so on, right? So here we are talking about transport uh, layer security, right? And for this, we are going to use, um, uh, we are going to use a separate uh, uh, port, right? Typically the DNS, uh, you know, the typical traditional DNS traffic uh, for that we use port 53, uh, the UDP port 53. Uh, but uh, for uh, DOT, we use actually TCP port 853. So there is a very specific port is defined for uh, this purpose. Now, by the way, I, I also actually just want to quickly add in something because sometimes uh, people also get a little bit confused uh, with these protocols and DNSSEC, right? Because DNSSEC is also something that uh, we discuss quite a lot nowadays. And uh, in fact, for last many years, we have been uh, talking and, and a lot of deployments as well. So that is why also I just want to touch on that very quickly. Uh, now, when the DNS protocol was defined very, or basically, you know, uh, protocol, uh, the very early RFCs came a uh, long time ago, early 1980s, back, you know, about 40 years ago or so, uh, these security mechanisms were not really built in to the protocol, right? Uh, so we had to come up with, um, to achieve different security objectives, we had to come up with different security protocols. Now, speaking of uh, security objectives, we have to talk about things like confidentiality, uh, the integrity, uh, the authenticity, and so on, right? Uh, now, with DNSSEC, the whole objective is to achieve the uh, authenticity and integrity. So authenticity and integrity means, uh, say, if I am sending something to you, uh, you have to make sure whether it is really coming from me, right? So that is uh, authenticity. And the integrity is that if I am sending something to you, uh, it is not modified in the middle. Right, so if I send you a, a response or a message, it is not modified in the middle. So we can preserve the integrity. So this is where DNSSEC comes in, right? Integrity and authenticity. And DNSSEC will not handle confidentiality or privacy for that matter, right? So confidentiality and privacy is not something handled by DNSSEC. Whereas here with the DNS uh, encryption, that's what we are trying to uh, solve, right? What we are trying to uh, address. So basically uh, the confidentiality aspect uh, or the privacy aspect, right? Uh, so try to understand the difference between uh, these protocols, DOT and, and DOH, and as well as uh, DNSSEC, right? So they, are uh, designed for different purposes, right? Okay, uh, coming back to our uh, discussion, I was talking about DOT, so which is DNS over TLS, and we will use um, a separate port for that. As I said, we will use TCP port 853, okay? 
uh, and then uh, basically you know with that uh, applications uh, can uh, you know use TLS and and basically you know uh, it can uh, applications can uh, basically you know use uh, TLS for this communication right and also the other thing is that this would not really impact the uh, operators or the ISPs, the enterprises, and, and the governments, and so on, because uh, because there is a specific port, and if there has to be some sort of uh, uh, filtering that has to be done, uh, it can be done based on this port, uh, port eight five three, right? So that is uh, that is the main uh, thing what you need to understand, especially in terms of DOT or DNS uh, over TLS, right? Uh, next slide. All right, now uh, from uh, the other protocol that we discussed, uh, that is DNS over HTTPS. Uh, now, one of the reasons actually, in fact, if you take these two protocols, uh, DOT came earlier, right? I think around in 2016 or so, right? DOT came earlier. And then um, there were some concerns from some different uh, 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 different uh, parties that, uh, okay, like because it was possible to filter based on that port number and so on, uh, you know, another alternative would be basically to uh, send it in the, uh, you know, together with the uh, HTTP as traffic, right? So that's the other option. So that is why we say DNS for HTTPS. So this uh, uh, was designed later on, right? You can see it is also an RFC now, RFC 8484. So here, um, now when it comes to, of course, um, this communication, encrypted DNS, it's all about actually trust, right? Uh, because uh, if we want to, um, you know, send basically, you know, our traffic, uh, we have to send, uh, we have to trust the party that who is receiving that. So it's a question about, you know, whom do you trust? Sometimes, you know, if, if we ask this question, uh, say, for example, you know, if I ask you, uh, okay, do you trust your bank, right? Uh, because uh, you give, you send your money to your bank, you, uh, you know, you transact, you make transactions with your bank, so you basically you have a trust with your bank right and then uh, you do your online banking and things like that so if you have built this trust with a certain uh, entity uh, with a certain in this case for a bank uh, isn't it possible that you also can think okay why not a bank operates my uh, bank operates my resolver uh, resolver service, right? Or bank operates my resolver and provide that resolver service to me, right? Because I trust them. So, you know, it should be able, we should be able to do, do that, right? If I'm using some sort, of, some sort of application, I mean, not necessarily, of course, a bank, a bank, I just took it as an example, but there could be a lot of uh, applications that what we, what we could be using. Uh, and we could also be uh, trusting that entity for us to actually uh, do all that resolution process as well, right? So it's all about trust, all right? So this is why actually there is this whole model called uh, trusted uh, recursive resolver model, or simply we call it as TRR. So TRR stands for trusted recursive resolver. So uh, basically then, uh, an application can think, uh, basically an application can think of uh, providing us some uh, trusted recursive resolvers so that we could use those. Say for example, a browser, think about a browser, right? So the browser can uh, give the user uh, some options of uh, TRRs or, or you know, trusted recursive resolvers. So we could use uh, some of those to do our resolutions. Kind of, you know, in a similar way, you can try to, you know, uh, have some analogy between even the uh, uh, certificate authorities nowadays, right? So even in your browser, you know, we use certain certificate authorities, right? So that is a trust model as well. So this is also some some sort of similar trust model as well. The application could provide us the uh, trusted 
recursive uh, resolvers so that we can uh, we can pick those right so the user decides uh, whom to trust and and uh, then uh, basically you know can configure the uh, the application to use that particular uh, resolver or simply we call it as a doh resolver or dns or https resolver right so now uh, we also actually uh, know that uh, because when it comes to https uh, based, i mean this is application layer so we will use uh, 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 tcp IP, tcp port 443 right so because it's all web traffic and this is also why actually uh, doh makes a bit kind of you know uh, complicated uh, especially in terms of you know uh, filtering and things like that because it's all going together with the web traffic right uh, and uh, so this would make much harder uh, for uh, for filtering and so on right next slide okay so let's try to you know we had some discussion now. Let's try to analyze the differences between these uh, three models. What we, I mean, three uh, different uh, things that what we talked about. So in trad in traditional DNS, I also told you that everything is unencrypted, right? So all those green arrows, what you see here, uh, it's all going in plain text or clear text, right? You can see the browser, the application, because browser is an application. And then uh, we have the stub resolver because I told you that stub resolver is actually not built in to your operating system itself. Uh, so between the application and the stub resolver, the operating system, it is all uh, clear text. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, basically, you know, it could be there could be some middle boxes, uh, right? It could be your home or enterprises, uh, some forwarders, and so on, uh, which would um, and then later go into your ISPs possibly, uh, or the cloud, right? Uh, and then uh, go into the other authoritative servers. So in whatever the case is, uh, everything in traditional, it's all unencrypted, right? So if someone is actually, say for example, uh, any of these middle boxes uh, looking at your traffic, uh, they uh, can see uh, exactly you know, uh, what's in the packet and, and uh, where are these queries going and so on, right? Next slide. So when it comes to DNS over TLS or DOT, uh, those red arrows, what you see here, uh, that's where the encryption happens. So you can see that uh, in the stub resolver, uh, so the encryption happens between the stub resolver and the uh, recursive resolver, which is in this case uh, operated, you know, could be operated by ISP, right? Or it could be in the cloud, right? So that's where the uh, uh, encryption happens. And then, uh, but between the browser and the uh, stub resolver, uh, as well as the recursive server and the authoritative servers, it's all uh, clear text, right? Next slide. Now, when it comes to DOH, uh, all the way from browsers to the uh, the recursive resolver, it's all encrypted, right? So you have the uh, uh, you know exit entry point and the exit point, right? So until you know, obviously whoever the party that runs the uh, DOH resolver can of course you know see your where it's going and so on, uh, but uh, until that time, everything is all encrypted. Okay. So I hope that now uh, it is clear to you uh, the differences between uh, the traditional DNS and then uh, the DOT as well as DOH. Okay, next slide. All right, um, now, so let's try to now understand because we understood this whole uh, mechanism now. So let's try to uh, analyze what sort of uh, potential impact, especially you know, uh, would what are the things that we will have to experience because of this uh, uh, because of this um, uh, situation, right? Now, from a service provider, uh, service uh, ISPs point of view, uh, they have to now negotiate to a different paradigm. Right. Unlike before, they have to deal with a new paradigm now. Why? Because 
they no longer be able to see all that uh, you know DNS basically you know the the traffic because it's all encrypted now right and uh, usually the uh, service providers they have some requirements like you know it could be regulatory requirements from a country or it could be their own local policies say for example if there are some uh, if the ISP is uh, filtering some malware and things like that uh, they want to give that protection to the client, so they could be uh, doing some uh, filtering, uh, you know, based on these queries. So, but now uh, they will not be able to do that because it's all encrypted, right? Um, and also the other thing is that from from a client perspective, um, say for example, uh, now the client is going to use different applications, right? So in case for some reason, I mean, when I say applications, I'm making it quite general. This could be a browser, this could be any other application and so on, right? Uh, so for some reason, uh, say the resolution uh, doesn't, I mean, it stops. It could be a problem somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. if, if I cannot resolve, if I'm the client and if I cannot resolve, uh, I mean, we cannot expect every user to do all this troubleshooting and so on, right? Generally, you know, if you take a typical user, they may not know about all these things. So they might think, okay, I can't get to this application. I mean, I can't get to this uh, uh, site, right? It could be the application provider or whatever, right? Uh, so they, if they can't get to a certain place, uh, the most probably the support service or support line as a support line they could be talking to the isp right so isp might get unwanted uh, calls now because uh, even if something goes wrong and and if the uh, resolver stops working still the isps have to deal with those uh, situations because the client might think oh, it's it's a service provider's issue so service provider uh, is is going to get those queries okay so these I'm, I'm just talking about some of these uh, practical implications, okay? And then uh, what else? Things like uh, parental controls, because some of these uh, service providers, they do offer things like parental controls, right? Uh, and then these also will not be able to uh, do because uh, again, it's it's all encrypted, right? And then, uh, other option, other things like uh, some of the legal sort of issues as well, because uh, sometimes you know um, some ISPs, some service service providers are uh, legally bound to do some uh, some sort of you know uh, filtering processes or, or uh, blocking certain sites and things like that. Now that is that is also not going to be possible as well because it's all encrypted. OK, so these are some of the uh, things that the uh, service providers, the ISPs, the network operators, they will have to deal with it now uh, with this situation. Right. So these are some potential impacts. Next slide. All right, so now again. This would also actually broaden up, especially you know when it comes when when it uh, when it comes to the public, um, you know, more, much more broad public policy perspective, right? Uh, not only ISPs, but also actually you know, earlier we were focusing especially from ISPs perspective, but this would still relate to a much broader public policy as well, because uh, say for example. Uh, there could be uh, some sort of, you know, legislat legislative uh, scenarios might occur as well. Say, for example, that I told you earlier that, you know, there is a DOH resolver, right? So our queries, that would be the endpoint. So that's the endpoint and, and that's the one, uh, basically DOH resolver is the one that who really knows um, about our queries and, and so on. So if, uh, say for example, if uh, for, for whatever some uh, legislative purposes, if the uh, resolver provider has to be involved, uh, there are some complications here as well because uh, this DOH resolver provider could be in a different uh, country, for example, right? Dif different uh, jurisdiction. So, what sort of laws would apply in this case? So, these are some some things uh, that we may have to think about, right? Um, 
you could be in one country, but the DOH resolver could be uh, in another country. So different jurisdictions, different legalities would, would also happen, right? Uh, and then uh, what else? Now, who get to determine the DOH resolver, right? So who decides that? Uh, so this is also a question, right? Is it going to be decided by the user? Or is it going to be decided by the uh, the browser? Or is it going to be decided by the application? Uh, and, and things like that, right? So who, who would decide that? And also actually, you know, typically, uh, if you take a general uh, internet user, you know, user might not be really able to uh, get a well, you know, you know, technical uh, judgment uh, because, you know, a normal internet user might not uh, not really know exact implications and so on, right? So uh, even if, say, for example, a browser could or the application could just, you know, pop up a question, uh, you know, would you take this uh, resolver as your default resolver or something? And a user might just click that, right? And then uh, by that way, uh, user is really bound to use that. So these kind of, you know, situations would also arise. Uh, can can arise, right? So these are also things that we, uh, I mean, some potential impacts that that can uh, uh, relate to these issues, right? Next slide. Yeah. So when it comes to then uh, some uh, policy implications, uh, you know, these are you know several things that uh, we may have to really. Uh, think about you know when when we talk about this whole uh, DNS encryption issue you know uh, there are of course several things um, now you can see there's a there's a list of things increase privacy for users DNS traffic so that we discuss because obviously now uh, privacy is uh, user privacy is there confidentiality is there so that is much more increase in comparison to the uh, traditional DNS. Uh, and then also that would assure, right? There is assurance for the user, uh, you know, for that DNS traffic because uh, it is not possible uh, to easily filter and so on. So there is an assurance of of uh, getting it to the uh, end uh, in place. And then uh, circumvention of DNS filtering for security. Uh, we discussed that, you know, there could be because sometimes, you know, the user could be going into some malware sites and things like that. Uh, and sometimes even malware sites could be uh, responding to the users, uh, some queries. So these kind of situations uh, also, you know, we have to look into, you know, policies in relation to these as well. And then uh, circumvention of DNS filtering for local policies. Now, local policy means here, you know, it could be the organizational policy or enterprise level policy, because in, in some organizations, say, for example, in some enterprises, uh, maybe they could come up with a policy saying that uh, during work hours, uh, say certain social media sites uh, should not be uh, accessed or, or visited. So they could have some uh, filtering policy based on that. So these kind of local policies could still happen, right? Uh, and uh, so, uh, so that's what I'm, I'm referring to, right? So local policies, and then. Um, what about the things mandated by the governments, right? So the governments also could be uh, mandating certain policies uh, depending on that uh, interest within the geographical area. So these are also things that we may have to think about. Uh, and then uh, there are other aspects as well, things like unwanted centralization of DNS resolution. So this cannot be detect detected as well. So when we say uh, unwanted centralization, because uh, I mean, as users, we don't know exactly where uh, sometimes, you know, where these queries are going, right? Where are these DOH resolvers are now in, in the say, for example, in even in, in, in real life now, uh, it could be only say, for example, if you if you think of browsers, right? So there are only few browsers, right? So there could be one particular browser that uh, out of internet users, a majority of the internet users could be using one browser. So in the same way, a majority of the internet users could be using a particular DOH resolver. So there could be some concentration there, okay? Uh, so maybe, uh, who knows, maybe, uh, the whole of uh, these DNS uh, traffic 
could end up in going in only into few uh, few of these uh, DNS uh, or, or DOH resolvers. So there could be some you know unwanted centralization, and if then if if such centralization could happen. There could be some negative implications as well. Say, for example, if if that resolver gets uh, some uh, uh, security threat or, or some attack or some uh, other vulnerability, then a majority of the users also can get affected. You know, things like these things, uh, things like those can happen as well. Uh, speed of DNS responses. Uh, obviously, like when we use these uh, encrypted protocols, uh, there could be some. Uh, performance issues as well because you know the encryption has to be you uh, i mean encryption is used uh, so there could be some uh, uh, slowness in terms of responses right next slide i think i uh, have explained some of these things so these are you know the explanation of those points that i was talking about so increased privacy and assurances so in general privacy is, is good Right, it is something uh, good for, especially from user's point of view, and then uh, encrypted DNS traffic, uh, you know, protects users. Uh, basically, you know, the, the part between the uh, stub, stub and the resolver, right? So that part is also protected, and then uh, encryption also prevents attackers from changing the traffic in responses. Uh, basically, you know, uh, the uh, uh, Earlier, we talked about, you know, I gave you some examples like uh, uh, different security situations like malware and even the uh, man in the middle type attacks. Some attacker could be actually uh, basically not changing the traffic uh, in the response. So, those kind of things uh, will also be minimized, especially, you know, because everything is encrypted. And then, uh, uh, what else? Like, uh, using DOA, DOT and DOH also increase the uh, security uh, for the DNS similar to HTTPS in the web. So, because we know that if you compare uh, HTTPS, there is uh, encryption, there is security over there. So, that sort of, uh, you know, advantage we have with DOT and DOH, right? Next slide. I think we also discussed in detail about the filtering stuff. I also gave you some example. Uh, that's what that's what which is explained here so we can um, uh, we can move on because we already spoke about this uh, unwanted centralization i think i have also actually uh, given some uh, idea about this one uh, and um, basically you know get, you know we even now we have some projects um, even uh, there are some community based projects as well where we try to measure these type of uh, centralization. So we find that a majority of the uh, DNS queries, you know, go into, you know, um, not huge number of uh, DNS resolvers. Uh, it is kind of, you know, limited number of DNS resolvers as well. So if this is becoming low and low, uh, and then uh, if we are going to only have very, say, a very small number of resolvers and, and all those con concentrations going to be within them, then this, this could also be some issue, okay? Uh, speed response, I think I uh, mentioned this as well. Uh, basically, you know, starting, even starting a TLS session, uh, it could be slower, right? And um, and the other thing is that sometimes some resolvers, especially if though if we are talking about those uh, concentrated one with a lot of you know some resolvers uh, DOH resolvers that are very busy, uh, they may have they may be overloaded. So TLS startup times could also play uh, play into this, and and this could be an issue as well. Uh, yeah, and then uh, basically the performance could be uh, something to think about. Next slide. Yeah, so, uh, so in general, uh, we have been talking about, uh, in general, the applications doing DNS. Uh, browsers is something uh, in more in more recent times, there have been uh, basically a lot of, you know, browser vendors, they are into this, uh, in, into this whole discussion. Uh, and then some browser vendors, they already have some, uh, 
implementations and and different type of implementations and so on i think in the next uh, next uh, session you will hear some of these uh, examples and and uh, demos on on that so i won't go too much into that but uh, the whole idea here is that not only the browsers but also there have been some uh, applications as well doing dns so the whole idea here is that unlike before earlier we had you know dns uh, is all happening in the operating system the stub resolve the function it's in the operating system but now uh, it is in the application and the thing the problem is also uh, say you have many applications right you have in, in if you have many applications in your device say for example right uh, and those different applications say mobile apps for example just i'm taking some examples right uh, if you have many mobile apps so all those apps could be using different 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 uh, resolvers uh, to do the resolution and uh, so this could this could create a lot of complications because the queries are going different places different countries uh, and those, you know, other issues, uh, who, who is going to, you know, uh, answer to those in case if, if some resolvers doesn't work, uh, who, who will fix those things, you know, those kind of issues will, will also uh, come into the picture, right? Uh, yeah, so these are some implications that we may have, we can expect. Next slide. Yeah, so with all that, I think uh, it's it's all up to the uh, the the all these different parties because you know when you speak when you think of DNS ecosystem, there are many parties involved, there are many stakeholders involved, right? The governments are involved, uh, the uh, uh, operators are involved, the uh, civil society is involved, and and many parties are involved. So there has to be some. Uh, some dialogue, some discussion, and so on. And then, uh, of course, you know, there are, uh, the brow as I said you know, earlier, there are some implementations as well from different uh, applications, different browsers, and so on. So, with this, uh, to this effect, uh, uh, from ICANN, also we have some certain positions on on number of things what we discussed. Uh, one thing is uh, from privacy point of view. ICANN's position is that privacy is always good, right? So it is it is a good thing, right? So if if we can give that option to the user, I think uh, uh, it is something that is recommended. In fact, um, uh, there has been some uh, uh, paper that was also published by the uh, ICANN uh, office of the CTO as well, which is actually, uh, in fact, this is kind of in our summary of that paper. So for, for more details, you can also refer to that paper as well. And, uh, uh, so privacy is generally good and then uh, filtering of dns this can be beneficial right uh, why it is beneficial uh, for those reasons that i mentioned you earlier things like malware you know because the, these are security issues that we are trying to uh, fix right and then things like parental controls and and these are all things that is actually beneficial for the users so those things are beneficial uh, but from the other hand now the applications and the uh, operating systems, uh, they really don't have uh, enough information uh, to take the, uh, you know, network network control decisions because, uh, you know, applications or, or, or the, uh, you know, they don't know exactly, uh, you know, they can't really take any decisions behalf of the uh, network. So that is the whole idea here. So there could be some uh, issue here. And also these applications, they can't take a decision based on a, a certain legal mandate, right? And and also due to all those reasons we discussed, you know, jur jurisdictions, the different countries and, and different laws and things like that, uh, it is not possible uh, for an application to take, um, you know, some sort of an, uh, legal mandate or a law enforcement type uh, decision uh, behalf of that right so these are some concerns that we see and then uh, the other thing is uh, dns data uh, should be protected so this is very important again this is actually in a, from an overall security point of view uh, it is important that the dns data should be protected right so these are uh, some positions based on those explanations that i've been giving earlier uh, these are some summaries that uh, we can um, we can uh, come up with, and and that is our perspective, 
and uh, so this is what I wanted to share. Uh, I think uh, uh, I hope that this discussion uh, would bring into some further discussion uh, also actually within uh, within your organizations and, and so on. And um, I think at this point of our next slide, please, I think that's what I want to mainly convey today. Uh, probably uh, if there are any any uh, questions we can take now or I can pass on to the uh, next, uh, I mean, I'll see their colleagues. Thanks, Champika, for a lovely presentation. And uh, 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 people uh, can put it in chat box also. We can answer them. Okay. Okay, there is some private question which says that. Uh, uh, child safety should come first at the design level do you have any research going on um, what uh, we can say here is basically uh, there are uh, uh, as uh, Samira, as Sampika has pointed out in one of the thing filtering of dns uh, for uh, uh, pornographic content and everything is uh, really catching up in the world and there are uh, 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 basically that way we can try to prevent. Uh, bring, I mean, the next step will be uh, this particular thing, preventing uh, uh, this thing. So second step will be that way. So right now it is starting up, and it is in the starting stages. So I think it will happen. It's only a matter of time, and uh, things are there. Right now, resolvers, public DNS resolvers are becoming more safer and. Uh, uh, we are trying to provide, uh, 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 trying to prevent people from accessing malware and things like that. So that is happening. And uh, the next level of research will be uh, that kind of thing also will be there for safety. Champika, you can add to this particular uh, thought. Yes, yes, uh, I totally agree with you. And and uh, uh, and also actually that point is also very uh, very valid point. Especially you know those that's why that's also why actually I was referring to things like parental controls and so on, which is actually uh, which is uh, something very important and and something uh, uh, very something very uh, good actually. I would say that you know if there are some certain uh, uh, filtering uh, based on that, you know that that should continue to happen yeah uh, so, uh, so that's the thing and any further questions we can uh, please write it in uh, chat box uh, so that now we'll go to our uh, uh, before that just one question we we got uh, okay now questions are started coming okay anyway just uh, we'll take up one or two how DNS data can be protected? What are the different ways? Okay, uh, DNS sec is one of the way. And uh, uh, anything else, uh, Champika, you would like to add this? Yeah. yeah. Now, um, I'm not sure actually whether you specifically, uh, when you post that question, you you specifically mentioned DNS data, right? Um, yeah. If if it is DNS data, as Dr. Balaji said. Uh, DNSSEC, you know, that is some, that is what you need to do. Uh, but uh, if, if you are, if you are actually speaking more broadly, uh, say uh, DNS uh, infrastructure, because your whole DNS infrastructure does not only mean DNS data, right? Uh, there are many, uh, many, many things in the DNS infrastructure. You, are talk you have your DNS servers, uh, you have your, uh, you know, trans D uh, DNS transactions, uh, DNS data, uh, even physical security itself, right? You know, who can enter the uh, uh, data center? Who can, you know, have have physical access to your uh, server administration? You know, all these things are part of the whole, uh, you know, whole cyber high, basically, you know, hygiene uh, itself. Right. So, if you have to protect your DNS infrastructure, then you have to consider all that. And uh, there are different security mechanisms as well. Things like, you know, if you have to uh, say uh, manage some uh, DNS transaction between your, uh, say, the authoritative servers, then there are, you know, things like access controls. 
uh, even uh, if you want to do those based on keys, there are things called transaction signatures. Uh, so there are various security mechanisms and, and you have to address those separately. And again, you know, if you have to protect your uh, recursive resolvers, uh, things like rate limiting, things like, uh, you know, uh, all those access controls, as I said. Uh, so depending on uh, the security threat, depending on the security uh, implication, you have to apply uh, proper uh, security mechanisms. But if you are specifically asking about this DNS data, uh, then I would uh, really recommend DNSSEC or DNS security extensions. Now, by the way, uh, again, you know, as also I told you earlier, uh, with the basic DNS protocol itself from, you know, the early design, uh, these uh, mechanisms were not really built into the protocol itself. That is why uh, we have to have these different mechanisms uh, as as uh, separate uh, separate things in addition. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sampira, for elaborating. Another question, a private question, uh, which says uh, there is a question about whether cash poisoning can be avoid, evaded by this DNS protection. And no, basically this is only to uh, uh, ensure privacy for your thing. Cash poisoning can be prevented only by using DNS sec. Uh, Champika, you want to add to this question? No, no, no. That's uh, yeah. You, you, you did. Uh, you, you're fine. Actually, yeah. it's all good. Okay. okay. 